Jack, and I w wouldn't agree with that. But a scientific breakthrough was about to offer them another alternative. In Washington, Dr. Mark Hughes was researching genetic mutations. He hoped to combine this work with IVF to help parents like the Freedmans. Would the technologies allow medicine to advance to the stage where we could make the diagnosis before they ever became pregnant? So that the embryo could be put back to the woman's womb and she could start her pregnancy knowing that it didn't have this disease, with a commitment to continuing it from day one. And that was basically science fiction just a few years ago. Through the grapevine, the Freedmans heard about a doctor who might offer them hope. I remember Dr. Hughes's name being mentioned to me and that he was at the National Institute of Health. So I went onto the internet and up came his name. So I immediately uh, sent him a message. I said, my wife and I recently learned that our son has spinal muscular atrophy and we are interested in exploring our reproductive options. Please let me know if you're interested in talking with us and we hope to hear from you soon. Signed, Albert and Ann Friedman. It, it wasn't on our agenda to work on spinal muscular atrophy, SMA1. We had a list of diseases that we thought we would try to work on first. Then we receive a call from the Friedman family and uh, they were quite persuasive that we should be changing our priorities and inundated me with emails and photographs of the family and pretty soon you, you started to get to understand their story more and more. Is that good? When they finally met Dr. Hughes, he showed them a picture of an embryo he had selected four years earlier that had grown into a healthy girl. He pointed to this one picture, you know, microscopic kind of pictures, and he said, this is a little four-year-old girl who doesn't have cystic fibrosis. All I could think of, that's a little girl who's riding her trike and playing with her dolls and going to school, and she's not dying. Hey, buddy. Somebody close to me said that this idea that we could have another baby this way with Dr. Hughes' help was a soap bubble is floating through the air right now because it could pop any time. This may not work. And we have one child and it's Jack and things haven't gone smoothly. It's hard to picture a healthy baby and, and certainly hard to count on it given what we've experienced. It's hard to count on anything, but uh, I believe it's important for us to proceed and try and be realistic and cautious. There we go. Ooh. There we go. Oh, Gail, you up. I'll bet I know what you want. You're looking at, oh, you see the raindrops, don't you? Is that what you're looking at up there? You see that rain coming on the window? One out of every 30 Americans carry the damaged Fanconi gene, like Jack and Lisa Nash, who live in Denver. Unknowingly, both pass their damaged gene on to Molly. Unless a bone marrow match is found, Molly will develop leukemia and die before the age of eight. She was born on the 4th of July, and the nurses didn't know what to say. The doctors don't know what to say. You know, they, nobody knows what to say. When it happens to you, it's a whole different thing. This can't be happening to me. I didn't do anything while I was pregnant. I had, how could this be happening to me? What did I, you know, you want to ask, what did I do to deserve this? We had a, a good number of ultrasounds during Lisa's pregnancy, and they didn't see any signs of this. I mean, she's missing her thumbs. I mean, you'd think that they would notice those things. When I saw her, I apologized to her. Told her I was sorry. But I thought she was the most beautiful baby I'd ever seen. And I loved her the instant I saw her. Hmm. She 
a good kid. She looks like me. Yeah. You want to sit up so you don't throw up, please? No, I don't. I would really appreciate it if you didn't throw up. No. Molly has to be fed directly through a valve into her stomach. Digestive and heart problems are classic signs of Fanconi's, as are deformities of the arms and hands. Oh, it smells lovely. Yeah. Hi, Molly. How are you? I waited and waited for a grandchild, and I knew I would fall in love with the grandchild and, of course, hope that everything would be healthy and perfect and normal. But I did not know how deeply I was going to fall in love, maybe even more so because of all the things we've had to go through with her. We all call her the baby goose. I'm not sure why or where that came from, but it's kind of a nickname. And yes, she touches everybody's life that she's around. She's constantly smiling and kissing you, and she's special. She's just extremely special. The Nashes have searched far and wide, but no bone marrow donor has been found. So Molly's only chance is for the Nashes to conceive a marrow-matching brother or sister. Lisa and Jack considered getting pregnant. Our problem with having another child is, what are our chances of having another child that has Fanconi's anemia? There's a one in four chance that the baby could have Fanconi's again, because this is an autosomal recessive disorder. There's about a one in five chance that the baby would be a bone marrow match for Molly. The chance of having a bone marrow match and a healthy baby together is a lot lower. Having several births, hoping always for a healthy baby, which was also a match, was a lottery that neither parent wanted to play. And time is running out for Molly. She said that What can we do to beat these odds? What technology can change this? And, and you do, you keep looking. Could a miracle of modern medicine help? They called and asked whether pre-implantation testing was available for Fenconi. And while we were doing our homework, they called back again and they said, you could identify which ones don't have this lethal disease. And then if there were any that were an identical match for our daughter, you could transfer those as well, preferentially stack the deck in the favor of our daughter. And now, at the time of delivery, you could hand this couple a healthy baby without this dreaded condition. And you could take cord blood that you'd normally throw away and simply give it to the sister and cure the disease in her simultaneously. The Nashes were asking Mark Hughes for a newborn healthy baby and more. Can you give me a nose kiss? A baby to save Molly's life. Now on the surface, that sounded like a wonderful way to use this technology, but the more I thought about it, the more I became concerned. Because for me, it was crossing this line between testing for serious lethal genetic disease and testing for a trait, in this case, HLA, a trait that is of uh, no intrinsic value to that newborn baby. It's of value to somebody else.